Hello Leo, Leo Rising, and Leo Moon people. This is your monthly astrological horoscope for the month of June 2017. And a quick reminder for you guys, remember, if you are ever curious about how the whole rising sign thing works, and you know, a lot of people always ask me about that, I have a special video that's on the main channel page. It's a featured video and answers all the questions I always get about that, how you find it, what it's for, why do people say so, you know, and that, that can clear up a lot. Um, and also, of course, you know, don't forget, I've been making announcements on all the videos. On the 10th of June, I'm going to be actually appearing on Nadia Shah's channel, and we all know who she is, she's a fabulous astrologer, for a special interview and discussion talking all about astrology, tarot, and spirituality. And it's going to be at, uh, on the 10th of June, okay, a Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, U.S. and Canada, or 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, U.S. and Canada. I don't know why it took me so long to say that. I just want to, like, hammer it home, you know. <laughs> and, of course, if you ever need to conversions, you can always Google that uh, for time conversions. Um, and I'll put a link to her channel below as well. And, of course, if you ever want to get a session with me, you can follow the links below. They're down there. Or go to integrativemysticism.com. So what is going on with your astrology this month? Well, when it comes to this month, a lot of what's building up is going to have to do with your, uh, basically, a lot of planets getting ready to group up, okay? And that happens every two or three months. We have the planets group up, and they all tend to focus on one area of our astrology chart. Now, that starts in the beginning of the month on the 4th with Mars, planet of action, energy, passion, and conviction, moving into your 12th house, your past, your privacy, and your hidden zone. And a lot of you Leo people may be trying to, you know, give a little bit more love and attention to either a work or a passion that you've been forced to kind of put to the side, whether it's for your career or maybe it's for your, you know, you know, some other, you know, some other occupying responsibility um, that's been kind of taking up a lot of time over the last year. And with Mars in the 12th house, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Our energies tend to go inward anyway. Be careful, you may be finding that this month is going to be, you know, you can feel like a little bit lower, lower in the physical energy, but a little bit stronger in the mental energy. Mars in the 12th house can also be an opportunity, again, to give a shot in the arm to something that you are truly passionate about, that you feel is, again, getting neglected, even at the workplace. You know, sometimes, you know, we get known for things that we're really good at, but we kind of burn out on it, and, you know, we have something else that we really like to do, but it's not easy to get the attention for that or, or the value for that because everyone knows you for something else. We've all been there. But with Mars going into this part of your chart from now all the way up until the end of July, you are going to see people much more receptive. So if you do need to actually put that on display, now is the time to get that ready. On the 6th of the month, we've got Venus, planet of love, harmony, and pleasure, moving into your 10th house of career, Taurus. And while, yes, this can actually boost the odds of perhaps finding lo romance on the job, whether it's on your job or on your new sweetheart's job, you know, where, wherever that goes, Venus is also about giving you fast, easy growth through favor, through popularity. Okay, and you may be winning a lot of popularity contests this month and into the first week of July. You may be noticing that people are willing to try and buy your attention, in a sense, with effort or possibly even financial, financial materials, financial commodity. Um, you may even find out that people are trying to win your favor or have you pick them as their favorite when it comes to working at the office. Even authority figures are going to be trying to win you to their side. Um, hopefully with a bit of grace uh, and civility and not shamelessly, but in a way that actually does help everyone out. Usually with Venus and Taurus, we see easy money as well. You know, things start to come where people are offering you more, incentivizing you. You may be finding out that you are doing the same amount of work but getting paid more for it. It's just like when Venus is in the earned income sector. And this will be promoting you. You may find you're just getting promoted just for the heck of it. There may be something moving out of your way, and you are hand-picked to get that taken care of for yourself. So a nice uh, turn of events there. And we also have on this day Mercury moving into Gemini, into your 11th house of friendships and social networking. 
and between the 6th and the 21st of the month we're going to be working on opening up channels of communication with friends um, in ways that actually are more inclusive, you know, th trying to include or maybe uh, more people that don't necessarily, I guess you could say, cross over certain boundaries and circles in our lives, and they probably should. You know, sometimes we compartmentalize our friends. These are my work people, this is my home people, this is, you know, whatever. And with Mercury in the 11th house, we're, we're starting to see where maybe some people need to be reshuffled um, for the best. Or perhaps even there are some people that are, are, are much better personal, close, close friends, and it's time to give them an upgrade to the chair they sit at at your round table. In fact, what can also happen with Mercury is that you tend to notice that um, you're getting more popular because people are wanting to introduce you and promote you um, themselves just because they think, you know, that you deserve it. They want to introduce you to more people, and a lot of you may be forced into more extroverted activities uh, than you're used to, even though Mars is in your 12th house. But it's a very nice thing to have as well because it's easy publicity, especially for those of you who need word of mouth to get things done. On the 9th, we've got a full moon occurring in Sagittarius, in your fifth house of love and romance, um, and your relationships with your kids. And a full moon can be a culminating experience, um, and it can be one of those energies. Some of y'all out there, are, you know, some signs out there are going to have easy times with this moon, some are not. Um, and it, it really just is a test that you've got to be willing to take. Okay, um, because a full moon, we talk about culminating energies, it talks about a sensitive topic that's brought to a head between you and a crush, you and a partner, or even you and a child that you have. Um, and there may be a, a bit of a row about it, you know. Some people aren't sure of themselves when it comes to being able to handle this, or articulate this, or stay committed to the solution. You know, this is basically all about how do we get closer, but first we have to solve this problem. The Geminis have a very similar situation going on. You may find that a child is unwilling or able to do this, or you may find that in a partnership somebody is not able to um, see this with objectivity. If you have any sensitive issues you do need to deal with, avoid the, the ninth and wait a couple of days until this energy passes, and we still will have to go through this communication but we'll be closer for it and come closer for it. Some people tend to crack on the day of that full moon when these things happen, so just keep that in mind. On the 9th as well, though, we do have Jupiter going direct in your third house of communications, packs, promises, commitments, and publishing. Uh. Um, and it does look like with Jupiter going direct, a lot of you uh, Leo people who've been maybe staying out of the limelight a little bit are going to be finding other people dragging you into the limelight. You're going to be credit getting credit for things um, that, you know, you might think are very small, you know, and all of a sudden you find out they're growing, you know, they're blowing up into things that are very big. Jupiter in the third house can be great for those of you that are publishers, those of you who work as performing artists, those of you who are um, maybe actually trying to just get into that field or get into the school of your choice. And with Jupiter, you may even find that you are able to actually get a lot of incentive or, again, a lot of money for actually taking on odd jobs um, that may actually, again, kind of boost your credibility or boost your availability in that field. Sometimes we've never done something before and we find out somebody wants to pay us to do it, we're not sure of ourselves, and bam, we have a new career. And there's an opportunity for that, you know, for you to showcase yourself during this time. And Jupiter is going to be pushing for that diversity and that expansion in your skill set, in your work life, all from now, all the way up until uh, we get into October. So if you are thinking about even integrating a new service you're providing or anything along those lines, this is the time to get that ready because after the 9th, people will be receptive. On the 16th, we've got Neptune turning retrograde in your 8th house. You have shared resources, passive income, intimacy, and self-employment income. And with Neptune retrograde, it's actually a really good thing. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people hear retrograde and they think it's bad, but you know, not all retrogrades are bad. And when we think about Neptune retrograde, I always tell people, we're taking off the rose-colored glasses or the tunnel vision goggles, and we're putting on our x-ray specs. 
okay, x-ray glasses. And during this time, you may be, you know, between now and November, it's a long retrograde, a lot of you Leo people are going to be finding out a lot of secrets and loopholes that you could take advantage of to maybe get a situation where you've been struggling under control. Secret opportunities to take advantage of or to exploit when it comes to growing your personal business, getting out of debt, possibly even um, negotiating a way to get a payment plan gone and done or lowered get something off, um, you know, off a credit report, or possibly even qualify for something, you know, for some kind of venture capital or a grant or a scholarship that you normally would not think was for you. A lot of unexpected support from places where you have a lot of doubts are actually waiting for you to grasp them between June and November. On the 21st, now we have all the planets starting to group up. We've got the Sun and Mercury at the same time moving into your 12th house of your past, your privacy, and your hidden zone. And we also have a new moon moving in this area on the 23rd. Now with Mercury going into the 12th house, you know, we do tend to pull back. It's time to start pulling our closest people closer to us and to spend a little bit less time, you know, letting everything circulate in the crowd. A lot of your best work is going to be done behind the scenes, and you may also find that you are getting closer and tighter with people who actually share the same past, the same values, and also at the same time, you know, just belong in that tighter inner circle. So we're not just talking about growing your circle anymore, we're talking about growing your inner circle. With the Sun in the 12th house, this is also going to be a time where a lot of you Leo people are going back and doing some serious healing over the past. Okay, whether, it, and usually the 12th house has to do with, you know, long time ago, at least 10, 15 years ago, possibly having to do with when you were an adolescent or when you were a child, possibly even working on healing issues that came before you when it comes to dealing with other family members. And this is a wonderful cathartic experience that's going to be going on with extra benefits that come out all from the 21st of this month all the way up until about the 20th of July. This new moon in the 12th house can also indicate an opportunity for a lot of you who are, you know, actively, you know, working on your spiritual path to find a new talent to get spooky on you, um, or a new ability, or a new spiritual path to actually explore that almost feels like it's custom made for you and your way of being. This can also be a wonderful new moon for those of you that are actually looking to expand an artistic talent, or maybe even again get that showcased and possibly some publicity if you need it. So that is your horoscope, Leo. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And of course, if you ever want to get a session with me, you can always follow the links below or go to integrativemysticism.com.